Steve Forbes, Senior Sergeant Greg Barris, and Tom Patterson. Tom is from ESRI, works a lot on um, uh, fires, big wildfire events. Um, Steve and Greg are from ACT Emergency Services Agency in Australia. Close. Oh, okay. Yeah, you want to repeat that? <laughs> I'll, I'll explain it. Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak here to you today. Uh, Greg Barris is my name. I'm an acting senior sergeant with the Victoria Police in Australia. And I have got the pleasure to tell you about a mobile application that we used recently to manage a major emergency. But before I go on, there's three really important things that you people need to understand. The first thing is that I'm an endline user. I'm not formally trained in GIS, nor are any of the people that were in the field on the day. The second thing is that what you're about to see is not what's possible, it's actually what we did, and that's the important thing here. And the third thing is that please remember, from the time that this event occurred, the time we built the application, we trained the people, we rolled it out, and we closed down the operation, it was 44 days. So it'd give you a bit of an idea of what's possible. Now on the 7th of February 2009, our agency faced one of the largest events we've ever had to deal with, the largest natural disaster in Australia's history, which resulted in most of my state being engulfed in fire, with 176 people losing their lives. And it soon became very, very clear that the systems and processes that we had in place were not adequate to deal with it. And what you're about to see now is an application that we built. We deployed members to the, the field with handheld computers running an ArcPad application and a geo-referenced RICO camera, in fact, 60 of them. And we captured information that was transmitted wirelessly back to our rescue coordination centre, which was then served in a web map application, which gave our commanders in the front line the information they, ne they needed to make critical mission decisions. And essentially, we wrote this application so that we could use a paper-based system, but at some stage, move across to an electronic system which is what we did. And we'll now demonstrate how these green forms and yellow forms, which related to the search of about 3,300 different properties with multiple structures on them, were used to search for human remains. So the application uh, was written, it was deployed, and as a person would walk onto a cadastral parcel of land, the GPS would automatically identify where they were bearing in mind that we had no way of knowing where we were because there were no street signs or street numbers. Once they were on the scene, the, uh, the, the form self-generated itself, at, sorry, the address populated itself, and of course the operative in the field would fill out that information, which is being done on the handheld at the moment. Once that information was done, it was validated. The form could not be compl completed until everything had been finished, and that was updated over a uh, standard... Uh, telecommunications network, a mobile phone network, and read back at the RCC by Steve Forbes's people from the uh, ACT, Australian Capital Terry Mapping, Planning and Support Office, who were also producing hard copy maps to send them up in addition to that. Okay, so this uh, hopefully has uh, now connected to our server. It's in fact transmitted that, uh, that information back to Australia. It's now been produced on the map and hopefully it's updated the database. By the time we refresh it, you'll see the information. And more importantly, the information was going two ways. It was not only going from the handheld back into the scene, uh, but it was also coming from the rescue coordination centre back out to the handheld. So other users in the field knew exactly what was going on. Okay, the uh, parcels of land were indicated with either red or blue parcels, indicating where ones that had been completed and ones that hadn't. I'll now hand over to Steve to give a quick overview of the data model. Steve Forbes, I'm a uh, manager of GOS and emergency services in Australia. One of the things uh, we have the advantage of uh, having is a team of volunteer GOS professionals, uh, over 60 members strong, who we bring in in major disasters to design systems. As you can see, the system that we've got here is quite complex, yet it was, had to be put together about as fast as this five-minute talk has to. We did have a gong as well, and uh, the GOS professionals were brought together to put the system together. 
uh, through sharing the files and web services, we'll be able to pump it out to all of the managers within the police network and the data coming in uh, live from the field rather than through the pieces of paper that we had earlier on. We're also taking geo-reference cameras using the Ricoh, uh, geo-reference photos using the Ricoh cameras as well. But I'll just show you a quick video of a police officer to finish off in here on how happy they were about not having to do paperwork. Uh, just uh, transmitting the information from these cleared blocks um, through to the network. So uh, this will be our first live transfer from the field. One database is uploaded to the system. Job's done. Wow. Thanks, okay. guys.